Drake is set to release his studio album Certified Loverboy in 2021 and we have covered a bunch of content around it because we've gotten a lot of different teases, we've gotten the Scary Hours 2 EP, so we're going to be going over everything we know about this new album Certified Loverboy and guys before we actually dive in, leave your final expectations for this album because man, it's been quite the ride so far. Yeah, I mean Drake has been teasing this album it feels like for the longest time and the first actual indication that we got that he was working on this new project was in 2019 at a show he was doing in London where he pretty much just said like my new album is being on work is being worked on right now so kind of keep an eye out for that so I mean I wouldn't think that two years later we would still not have the album right yeah it's crazy man it's been going on for so long but we have gotten a compilation tape um before that if you call it if you call dark lane demo tapes that and it was nice to see new you know music from Drake and a new different type of style because um Scorpion had its had its sounds and it had its structure and it was really nice I, I enjoyed Scorpion as a listen but dark lane demo tapes was really nice because it gave me an indication of where Drake was going to be going with his career and all the types of different sounds we had gotten from it I mean if you look at let's say like chicago freestyle or like even like let's say desires or you know for uh, from florida with love there was a lot of different aesthetics that yeah. were being presented or on that song, project or a song like demons where he taps into his drill bag that was interesting to see too so we got that on may 1st 2020 and th at the same time that he dropped that you know project he said you know the real event the main event is coming in summer of 2020 which was going to be certified lover boy so it was pretty cool to see that he drops a project out of nowhere and announces his actual you know next studio album and i mean darkling demo tapes was definitely cool it definitely held me over for a little bit um but you know then summer rolled around and CLB was nowhere to be found. Yeah, you get into August and August fourteenth, you know, La laugh now, cry later drops, and you know, you get the actual. That's the um, first. That's the first single. Th that, off that, of CLB. Was, th that was the first single we had gotten from it, or like the first indication that this thing, this thing was actually going to be rolled out. And you obviously got the title with it, and you know what type of branding he was going to give with it. So you know, knowing that whole event, because that was the at that point I was getting hyped. I was like, yo, this might actually come this year. So what were your initial expectations when you had gotten that type of news? Um, I love the song, to be honest. A lot of people didn't fuck with it too much, but I mean, from everything from the production, that high spirit energy you get, those kind of triumphant horns that you have, and also like what Drake's rapping about is, you know, him kind of being able to stomp over his competition and how no one's kind of um, catching up to him in that race. Facts. And then you get a, a short but memorable verse from Lil Durk. So it was a great song, and I feel like he killed the last verse on there too, in terms of just like the technicalities of his rapping really on point so it really hyped me up and it kind of grew on me the more and more that i heard it okay so how about now how heavy is it into your rotation is it still there or it's still there to be honest okay, i'll nice. definitely check in with it every now and then that's really sure. nice yeah me too i definitely end up going back to it but let's fast forward to october 24th where we end up getting the teaser video and i mean this was a uh, sort of a, a, a nice moment but also kind of a disappointing moment because it did reveal that um drake certified lover boy was not going to be dropping um in the year of 2020 and like at that point i was like man he teased it for so long and we're not gonna end up getting it this year but i was like okay my expectations are still high because that's when he revealed hey january's coming around the corner fuck it let's drop it then so yeah. what was what were you, what was your let's say your emotions around that knowing that it wouldn't come this year man. well past year well honestly i didn't really care too much because that teaser alone hyped me up so much crazy video i mean the way that you know he brought in that nostalgic factor of him um recreating those old album covers um you know from so far gone to take care um him sitting in that same type of chair um with the same look and um also, at the end of the teaser, you got the branding for Certified Loverboy kind of with um, the flowers around it and the yellow text and all that sort of stuff. So right away, that gave me an indication that, you know, maybe he's going to bring in some old sounds because he's doing the, re the recreation of the album covers. But at the same time, I'm like, this might be more of a of an R&B type of Drake. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just from the title of the album and from that branding that I got, I'm like, at this point, I feel like he doesn't really want to go too much into um, kind of that pure spitting, you know, real hip hop type of sound. So that's kind of the the, the vibe that I got from that branding. Well, and, and it was revealed, I mean, that uh, people were going to have sort of mixed receptions with it, the same sort of receptions that were um, attributed to views. Because if you look at views, there's a lot of different sounds going on. There's a lot of different um, sort of vibes to the track list and there's ups and downs within all of it. So that's what I'm excited for, though, is like I want to see how he structured this track list. And I'm that's what I think I'm most excited for out of all of it. But let's 
actually get on to January because now we're in January. Like, okay, when is this coming? Like, is this coming like in the first week, second week, third week? But get to January 20th and you find out that it's not coming out because he uh, released an official statement saying that, you know, he took some time because of the knee injury and that he just got out of surgery. So it wasn't a right time for him to drop it and can never blame a guy for that. I mean, it does happen and, you know, people do need their time to rest. So were you disappointed? And like, what was the emotions going on after that? I was definitely disappointed. I mean, at one point, like I think it was maybe january 8th or 9th around there like people kept telling me okay he's definitely not dropping it at this point and i was a firm believer that he was going to drop on january 29th never happened obviously and it's understandable why he pushed it back and um i was disappointed because i'm like okay at this point with all these you know delays he's definitely making sure that this album is perfect because obviously um the reception off of scorpion was probably the weakest it's ever been for a drake album and there's kind of that conversation around his name of, oh, is he going to fall off? He's been at the top for nearly a decade at this point. I don't think he's going to fall off. I don't think way. he's going to fall off either. But um, I just, I feel like him delaying this was kind of a good sign of him being like, I want to make sure that I can put out the best 12 or 13 songs or whatever it is out for my fans that is true and that's what i had mentioned i had mentioned previous to this whole thing that like yo i want to hear how this track list is going to sound because it's such an important um component in any sort of drake project like you go through it and you you have to understand that the way he drake structures his project is meant to cater to all of his fan bases because you have to understand too is that drake is no longer only a rapper he's an artist he's touched so many different types of crowds and pleases it's like how are you going to even cater um one sort of sound and one focus track list and even at that the bigger challenge is how are you going to get that one track list to speak to millions of different people so that's what i find is impressive about it is that he's able to cater his sound to millions still while keeping that consistent track list yeah i mean look i feel like at this point drake has kind of given up on creating let's say that classic hip-hop type album where yeah. it's a very cohesive track list and there's kind of an overall theme or message but at this point if you're a drake fan you have to kind of appreciate what the music is and it's pretty much you know one big playlist of a nice sound whatever I feel it as, may yeah, be i feel as if the last time we got that was if you're reading this it's too late back in 2015 like that sort of coherent um sort of a, yeah. a aesthetic to it let's just say like obviously there was you know some r&b tracks on there but he really tried to go for more of a trap aesthetic and you know knowing what was popping back then that was super fitting for the time and then you got views which had that diversity in it then you got more life which had you know jamaican dance hall and then it had that playlist vibe to it go to scorpion it's almost like a double-sided album where you have one side that's purely hip-hop the other side is going to be all over r&b so do you think that it's going to be a double-sided album this time or do you think it's going to be one track list no definitely not he he actually said it i'm not sure which interview it was but he said i'm never doing a double album ever again okay and he said that this track list would probably be in that range of let's say 13 to 16 tracks and that's really exactly what it should that. be anyways let's go on to march 5th where the scary hours 2 ep was dropped and you know academics actually was the was the person to announce that drake would be dropping new music ahead of the release mm -hmm. and we got three songs and of course drake broke that billboard record of having the number one number two and number three songs debut on that hall 100 chart and um aside from lemon pepper freestyle the other two songs have completely left my rotation and it's interesting because what's next when number one laugh and i'll cry later didn't go number one but i feel like that's the better song out of the two that is true but i also think that he released that pack to gauge to see where the fans are at and 100 percent. And, and what was the reception on them so that's the waters right? It, it, it's different because i hope that we do get that diversity because i love the pack i'm gonna admit that pack was super heavy in my rotation um is it still right now though I wouldn't say so, but I would say Lemon lemon Pepper Freestyle is still in there. I would also say like Wants and Needs, you know, jumps in every once in a while. But I just, I like the overall vibe for it because it was really well put together. Like it didn't sound like a shitty Drake song. And like, I, that's what another thing I have to say is like Drake low-key doesn't have shitty songs. Like, Did you see I, that Playboy Cardi and Baby Keem were supposed to be on What's Next? That's going to be, how would you feel about that? How did, like, I don't would know, Would you think man. it would have changed the whole vibe of the EP? I could see Baby Keem, you know, on there, but Playboy Cardi, I it mean... It would have been different. Like, Pain 1993 was really not it. I mean, oh, Drake, you didn't Drake, like it? Drake carried that song. I Cardi liked it, had no fucking place there. I liked it. It's something that okay. definitely... It, like, it's not a skip for me. Like, I go to I go through Darkland demo Fair tapes, enough. and I, I, I rarely skip it. Like, I do enjoy it. But I do got to agree with you. I think it was better to have him only on it. Um, but I would like to maybe see Baby Keem on this new album. Who knows? For sure, man. Um, let's fast forward, though, now to um may 21st 2021 so 
from early March till now, pretty much, we haven't had um, much news at all on this album. So right now, it looks like it's going to be a summer album. Let's hope at least. But on May 21st, we got the Fair Trade snippet. Mm -hmm. And this was, you know, around the time that he um won his um his award for the decade of the for artists, artists of the decade, artists of the decade no stress. and um this snippet was interesting because it's art it starts off with what sounds like jesse reyes vocals at the beginning okay, nice that's who i think is on it and she was rumored to be on another leak so i feel like he has been collaborating with her um in terms of the actual song itself uh, or the snippet he flows really well i fuck with his flow some of the bars didn't hit home for me I mean, it wasn't my favorite kind of material that I heard from Drake. How did you feel about it, though? I liked it. It was nice. It was a vibe. Like, it was it was Drake. Like, I, that's the other thing is, like, where else is he going to go? Like, the guy's literally gone everywhere. So, at this point, like, whatever I get from him, I'm just going to appreciate it and just enjoy the music for what it is because, yes, maybe it won't be, like, you know, the, the most grandest Drake that you're possibly going to get. But still, like, we have to appreciate the sort of music yeah. that he's putting I out. I just because, want him to push his yeah. artistry. That's all it is. That, I, I want him to try something new and, like... But when he, but he always does that, though, right? So he, that's something he, that he you can expect. To, but with the last couple of songs and the snippet, I don't know if I'm really getting that. It's quality nonetheless, but I just... I want Drake at this point in his career to kind of go that extra level. Okay, so how, uh, in your opinion, how does he do that? Like, it's such a hard... Qu uh, Experimenting, you know. man. Like, like he always does. Tapping into different pockets. If it's drill, if it's trap, whatever it is. Tapping into something new and maybe just elevating his artistry by maybe improving his pen game. Coming sharper with the lyricism or just... Um, creating R&B music that really lasts for a whole summer like he's done in the past, but just adding a new funk to it. You know what I mean? I got you. And then obviously, like, there's the whole thing of the off-season releasing and that J. Cole sort of was the first one to break the waters out of the big three. So, you know, academics did come out and say that Drake is waiting for um, one of them to release so he could come out with something that's bigger and better. So that's the question now. Does he do it? Does he come out with something that's bigger and better? I don't know. I feel like, obviously, Cole, Kendrick, and Drake are always going to be compared, but... It's a different type of sentiment. I, I, honestly, I feel like Cole and Kendrick are more comparable in terms of the albums they drop because they're going for a certain, um, I would say, a certain sentiment in the sense that like they want to drop you know, pure, like strictly hip-hop albums that have one main message that's kind of more socially relevant. Mm -hmm. But with Drake, it's just about creating these hits and creating timeless music that's going to kind of um, grab everybody's attention. So... After Drake, you know, probably heard the offseason, what I think he probably did is maybe step up his game and be like, okay, my album has to be better in every way. You know, the, the songs have to hit harder. I don't want a single, you know, weak song on the track list. So for me, it's probably just inspiration. That is true. That that's true. That I, I honestly, it. like, I, I don't think they, I genuinely don't think they care like that anymore. Like, regardless, they all have their names cemented in hip hop history. And but like, what was whatever they drop is going to be crazy. What was interesting was on May 23rd, Drake accepted his award for uh, Artist of the Decade at the Billboard Awards show. And he said how his competition actually leaves him tossing and turning in bed at night, wondering what he should do next and how he could improve. So awesome. I do like that Drake is kind of still you know heavy within the culture he has his ear to the streets and to the music that's coming out and uses that as fuel to kind of improve himself and you know what he would have coming with clb yeah it's gonna be absolutely crazy so guys listen um if you guys did enjoy this video you guys are gonna enjoy our review even more and not only that guys but as i said at the beginning of this video leave your final expectations for this beautiful project thank you guys for watching the whole video hit that subscribe button to join the family we're doing weekly reviews we're giving you guys all the updates in the industry plus we have our series called what to expect where we actually take you through the album before it drops um plus if you guys want to chat with us you guys could join our discord server the link is in the bio you guys could talk hip-hop with us there thank you guys for watching again and guys i'll see you on the next one